Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Red Dead Online and we're doing another outfit guide. Today we're going to be looking at Josh Faraday, Chris Pratt's character from the 2016 film The Magnificent Seven. So lots of cool outfits in this uh, in this film, but I think uh, the one that makes the most sense to start with is Faraday, Chris Pratt, probably the coolest character in the movie. Not gonna lie, definitely an awesome movie. Um, but anyway, especially for a remake, you know, it's, it was it was really good for a remake. We're gonna start off as always with his guns. So the first gun we're gonna be looking at is is his main hand Colt single action army. So Faraday uses two Colt single action armies, but they actually look very different from each other. So the one that he wears on his right hip, his, his main hand weapon, appears to be pretty similar to this. So it appears to have a short barrel, and his has an ivory grip, but that's not an option, so we used a pearl grip here. And then I wasn't sure what metal to make it, because it, it looks totally different in several different pictures. In some of the pictures, it appears to have a iron or nickel plated frame, hammer, trigger, and trigger guard, and then a kind of black and steel for the cylinder and the barrel and I was gonna go with that but then in another picture that I saw it looked to all just be either nickel plated or what in the game here is just called iron so I just stuck with the iron like I said if we changed it to look like it does in some of the pictures then the cylinder would be black like this and so would the barrel so then it would look like this if we went by those pictures but like I said I was only able to find a few that looked like that so that's why I went with the all iron so that is what we have his main hand Colt single action army revolver looking like then for his secondary weapon the one that he wears on a tilted quick draw holster over to the left which is fun because it's like one of the few characters I've ever tried to recreate that has the same holster configuration as we're available uh, that's available to use in the game so but anyway his second one here we did another one with the short barrel this time with the ironwood grips and the mesquite finish and then I went with the all black and steel for the entire gun now again this one it was hard to see because in some pictures it looked like it had the iron frame with the black cylinder and the black barrel in some pictures it kind of looked a lot more like the brown steel but in most of the pictures I was able to find it did look like this with the with the uh, black and steel look to it so that's why I went with this one so for the uh, the main hand revolver I did the pearl grips with all the iron finish and then the offhand revolver I did the ironwood grips with the mesquite finish and then the all black and steel no engraving no carving on any of them so that's his two revolvers so then lastly now he also uses what looks like a Winchester rifle in the movie but it's it's not nearly as iconic as the double barrel shotgun that he uses in the movie so that's why I have this one it's it looks a lot like the Cimarron 1878 coach gun which I'm pretty sure is what he used in the movie which is a very well-known company for making replica guns that are used in a lot of westerns but this is what it most closely looks like so we went with uh, obviously wood for the stock and I went with kind of a light reddish look to it because that's what it looks like in the movie I went back and forth between this and the mahogany but I think it looks more like this and then I just did all blued steel finish because the one he uses in the movie doesn't even appear to have any case hardening look onto it it just looks all solid blue so that's why I went with this so we're going to do for this outfit in summary that means we have two Colt single action arm revolvers or in the game they're called the Cattleman revolver and a double barrel shotgun so that's the guns for Faraday let's go check out the outfit. So here we have the outfit as a whole in its entirety and honestly I think it looks pretty dang good. Now obviously it's not absolutely perfect but I think it looks almost exactly like the outfit that he wears in the movie. I was able to imitate it pretty dang well. So let's just uh, start off with hair. So he has uh, medium length hair, nothing super fancy, doesn't really hang down at all, but it is kind of a darker, almost blackish brown. And then his beard is quite a bit shorter than this. I went with the Reverend because it's, you know, the best option we have in the game, but his is obviously much shorter than this. And again, I went with a darker brown look for it. So that's what I did for the hair. It's not perfect, but I think it gets the idea across uh, you know, for Faraday. So that's the hair. Let's move on to the clothing. So for the hat, I went with the clean black variant of the stalker hat because it looks basically identical to the hat that he wears in the movie. I went back and forth with a couple different versions, but it's it was pretty easy to tell that this was almost identical to the hat that he's wearing in the movie from one of the pictures I found of him using the shotgun that I used for the weapon section of this video. Per that photo, this hat is basically perfect, so that's why I went with the clean black stalker hat. Then for the neckwear, I went with the red narrow neckerchief. Now the neckerchief that he wears in the movie is patterned, and it's maybe a 
more of a uh, maroon kind of look, but this was pretty dang close, and it's got the same basic shape and style, and it fits basically the exact same as the one he wears in the movie, so that's why I went with this one. So for the vest, I went for this bottom variant, the 10th variant of the Lancer vest. It's uh, kind of a more worn-out looking black leather vest. Now, the vest that he wears in the movie is not leather. It's some sort of a patterned linen. It actually looks kind of fancy when you look at it uh, up close, but this one had the best... Uh, color and style to match that out of any of the vests available in the game, so that's why I went with this one. Then for the shirt, I went with this gray variant of the Everyday Overshirt, and I rolled the sleeves up because his sleeves are rolled up for basically the entire movie, and he has kind of a light grayish, maybe dirty white looking shirt. But the main reason I went with the Everyday Overshirt is because, A, I, was, I found a picture of him not wearing the vest and just the shirt, and it only buttoned down to about halfway, and B, this one's the only one where if you use the narrow neckerchief, it doesn't tuck in under the collar. Well, I shouldn't say it's the only one, but it's the best looking one for the color and the style of the shirt that also keeps the neckerchief on the outside like he wears it in the movie. So that's why I went with the gray everyday overshirt. Then for the gun belt, I went with this uh, darker brown variant of the Bulger gun belt and the matching offhand holster, and honestly, they actually look very, very similar to the ones that he wears in the movie. They're not absolutely perfect, but very close in style and the color and the appearance. They're smoother, don't look quite as form-fitting as his holsters do in the movie. His look much narrower than this, which is weird because he's supposed to be a quick draw guy, and these are the more, you know, accurate for someone who intends to pull their gun very quickly. But, in any case, they look pretty dang close to what he wears in the movie, so that's why I went with, like I said, this variant of the Bulger gun belt and the matching holster. Uh, no additional belt buckle, even though in the movie you can see he wears a gun belt and a regular belt on his pants, and on his regular belt he's got a large oval silver belt buckle. There was nothing in the game that looked anywhere near that, so I just didn't even try to put it on. So that's why I just stuck with the plain buckle for this gun belt. Then for the pants, I went with this brown variant of the Cabrera pants. I think they match pretty much perfectly. They're almost exactly the same color as the ones he wears in the movie, and they have the same basic style, so they've got the right cut and they sit basically the same way. So that's why I went with these pants. You could argue that most brown pants would be fine, but I think these ones are by far the best. Then for the boots, I went with these plain, lighter brown, clean variant of the worn ropers boots and I have them tucked into the pants because that's how he wears them in the movie. Again, most plain brown boots would probably be fine, but I think these ones fit perfectly. And then I did not include any spurs because I was not able to find a single picture of him wearing spurs. I could be wrong and I might have just missed it, but I don't think he wears spurs in this movie. That is Chris Pratt's character of Josh Faraday from the 2016 remake of The Magnificent Seven. I think it looks pretty dang good. Like I said, the vest isn't absolutely perfect, and the neckerchief doesn't have, like, the pattern that his has, but honestly, it looks really, really good. This is definitely a new favorite outfit of mine in this game. So, uh, that is what it looks like. But that's actually where we're going to end it for today, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're one of the many people that has already recommended, uh, you know, that I do some of the characters from the 2016 Magnificent Seven remake, then I hope this video you know, fits what you were hoping to see. And, like I said, I'll probably do some of the other characters from The Magnificent Seven. Uh, if you've got one in particular that you would definitely like me to check out, I would ask that you leave that down in the comment section, just so I know. Uh, because they're all pretty dang good, and modern Western characters are, for the most part, probably the easiest to imitate in this game, just because, you know, the, with the more modern styles, you actually have characters that button up their vests and wear dusters and, you know stuff like that. So they're probably easier to imitate than a lot of the older ones that I also really, really enjoy doing. But that was all just a really long way of saying, if you've got any requests, anything you'd like to see me recreate, definitely leave it down in the comment section and I'll give it a try. And of course, as always, if you like this video, I definitely ask that you leave a like rating to show me and YouTube and anyone else that might be considering giving it a watch that it is a good video well worth watching. And lastly, if you haven't already, I definitely ask that you subscribe to the channel. Because as you're probably aware, because I've been saying it in all my videos recently, I do have a goal that I'm trying to reach of 30,000 subscribers at or before September, with the ultimate goal of reaching 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I know that seems lofty for a channel of my size, but I have been doing it for a while, and I think we're getting into a groove where people are actually really enjoying the content I'm making and are proving it by subscribing. So if you haven't already, I ask that you do subscribe. And if you've already subscribed and you still want to help out, I guess the best way to do that is probably by sharing this video or another video that you like and telling other people that you know to subscribe. Also, you could, if you're, you know, doing all of that, you could probably just send me all your banking information while you're at it. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day and we'll see you next time.
Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.